Good morning. Good morning, Roger. How are you today? Oh, pretty good. How are you? Great. I'm very excited to continue on what sh is sure to be an action-filled second session of this. Are you ready to get started? Yes, I am. This is going to be interesting. Without a doubt. I want to welcome everybody back. This is officially session two of Scenario 6, our second playthrough. So if you haven't watched any of the previous, stop right now, go back, find them on the playlists, and do yourself a favor, because especially the first playthrough and the first half, of course, in that session will tell you all about the special rules for this. But if you are just keen to see what this whole great campaign thing is all about, well, you can stick around. I mean, you're going to be spoiled a little bit, but that's okay. I also, just as a quick aside... I want to let everybody know that we found out just in the last two weeks since Roger and I played, maybe I saw it on social media, I don't recall where, where it was, but that MMP has put most of the materials to press, and they are putting all the boxes together for On to Richmond 2, and they're hoping, and the, the, I'm dating this now, of course, this is, we are in May of 2023, but they're hoping by the end of June to start shipping these things out to the pre-orders that's fantastic that is well ahead of what everybody's expectations were so you by the time you're watching this in the future may have a copy in your hot little hands and you're just playing right along with us so that's fantastic I can't wait yeah this is this title it's going to be so so nice to get this update with the upgraded maps for the on to Richmond campaign and the new petersburg campaign i'm i'm excited to get it and and the updates they've done to grant takes command so yeah i was excited to see that and i was very surprised i it, they seem like they're always more pessimistic than optimistic so it was nice to see an optimistic projection i guess from a marketing and a business standpoint they have to keep things sort of down to earth and with all the printing schedules being messed up over the last few years I would assume they're going to err on the side of caution, but I think that yeah. this is wonderful news. And we have been so excited to be kind of uh, an ancillary part of this by giving you all a preview for the last two years, not only with the On to Richmond maps that we did right out of the gate a couple of years ago. So thank you to everybody at MMP and Joe and Ed and Chris and all of you who let us see all that stuff, but also provide you guys with a little quick preview of all the stuff that that is coming with this, especially the maps. The Charlie Kibler updates to the maps are just worth the price alone. So if you have not pre-ordered, you could probably still get your opportunity to jump in on that price. Uh, this may sound like a sales promotion at this point. I might have to put that flag on for this. I don't typically do that <laughs> in these, but uh, yeah, that's one of the way I've kept this channel as sort of uh, neutral is by not being a promotional aspect. But if you have not and you're a great campaigns fan or if you like what you've seen, lo these last few years that Roger and I have been doing this, you can still jump in on the On to Richmond price. So well worth your investment, I think so. Yeah, I'm looking at the website now which is may 21st they still show a pre-order price so these games as everybody will say boy they sell out right away i hate to say if you wait you might not be able to get it at this price for quite a while in this case that that little feeling of fomo as the kids like to say today is reasonably justified because the print runs are such that they're pretty much just a you know a several percent above whatever the pre-orders are just for online orders and other vendors and things like that but once they're gone you're probably not going to see a reprint for a while so if you have any interest in getting this now is the time to do it this has been your final warning <laughs> yeah, pretty much <laughs> and in the future hopefully you're not going oh why did i not pre-order when i when these guys told me to so i mean i i spent years that was the, everyone's grail game was the original avalon hill final production copy of on to richmond from 1998 i spent years wandering around the wilderness trying to find a copy and i finally got a copy and uh i was like do i want to open it and it was in shrink and then luckily i got a second copy that was a player's copy and i was able to you know bust it out and and play it so uh yeah yeah so the kids college fund was secure right <laughs> 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 yeah that's probably true yeah i got my copy as we've talked in the other videos i just can't help myself being a completist um, same and uh 
enjoyed it a great deal, especially enjoyed the playthroughs that we did because that that's what really was like, okay, that campaign. I'm going to be excited to play the On the Richmond campaign with somebody or Solitaire because that looks just fascinating with the rules they have there for that. Mine was less about being a completist as I just like that new box smell. And you know, <laughs> to have some trapped air from 1998, it was just so nostalgic. Oh, uh, anyway. Well, yeah, you'll have to put a tag sales, whatever you have to do for that. Yeah, we've pushed up MMP. We have moved into shill territory. <laughs> yeah, we you know. have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's get back to our game here. So the this, this situation so far is we are now officially on turn three three if I can there it is turn three so I have uh, marked it yes we are on May 23rd which uh, ironically just two days from now in the real time yeah so we are playing this at the appropriate time of the year the overland campaign is 160 years removed 159 years removed yes 159 years we just celebrated the 160th Chancellorsville not too long ago we are in the thick of it Roger is pressing as the Union, and I am doing everything I can with all my little fingers in the proverbial dikes to keep Burnside from running away with it. Uh, I looked at the map this morning, and uh, there's that, that small cloud of pessimism that just comes over, you know, over my head, the Patrick cloud, and I think, uh I need a few breaks here, because I haven't get, gotten all the breaks. I'm holding status quo but the status is not quo, to quote Dr. Horrible. So I don't know exactly what I need to do here, when I need to pivot and start trying to get some points back, because the VP situation is not great right now. I am sitting at five manpower losses to Roger's one. So that means I've got 15. He's got 15 points from me, and I've got two back. So it's net 13 right now, and he only needs 18. And all of these territories right out here, Knowles, Turnout, and Verdon Station, they're just a ripe for the plucking. So I got to figure out exactly what I can do here. And you can't count on anything because that string of initiatives is always just hanging out there, right? Yep. Um, and I'll, I, I'm assuming you haven't forgot, but I'll remind you, uh, you do give me VPs if you cannot, if you do not get into Louisa or Hanover counties. I am aware. So okay. um, for, for me, mentally, that is, uh, that's, well, I'm not going to give everything away, but yeah, suffice to say, I've spent two days just kind of lollygagging. At some point, I will need to pull those lines back, but it's it's waiting for the moment to squeak, right? So I, I, I'm trying to figure out what my interim plan here is between now and the end of this, the game, but really as much, much is going to depend on if you get the first few initiatives and you break out and yada, yada, yada. Yes, and I'm not sure what I'm going to. Well, that's good. I'm I'm heartened by that because <laughs> <laughs> much so much of this is we making took, it up. A as... week off for those of you who are wondering why we had a gap. Uh, Mother's Day was sort of a gap day for us, and now we're. Uh... And I just didn't start looking at this just before I opened up the I'm, I, opened up our session. Again, so. I'm wonderfully happy to hear that. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what to do here with leadership. And, well, that is the first question. So you get the option for any leader transfers that you wish to do first. Let me see. And good luck, as always. Yep, good luck to you as well. Well, I guess I'm going to take Grant and move him down to Warren. Because I think if there's going to be any big battle, it's going to be the Battle of Milford here. I think I'll leave everybody else where they are for now. It does change things a tad. I guess I don't have to worry about that so much. Um, I'm going to move Lee up to Anderson. Because I suspect that that's going to be something here momentarily. Um... And I'm going to move AP Hill up to Mahone, get some movement out of him. And I'll move Yule on top of Road Stack. Give me an extra pip there. And that is all. I think I'm good. Oh, everybody else. So, uh, why don't you take the first initiative roll? Okay. Okay, here we go. And it's yours. Okay. I will activate Heath to one. Hear his his movement. 
that's fine. Yeah, we're going to take a shot at it. We'll go with Zock to Zock and he will flip. Here's the next initiative. And it's mine. Okay. So we will attempt an assault on Hancock from field. So field will go to two. Here is his... Before you roll, yep. I will announce the 5th New York will stand. See, that's the, th the wonderful thing about assaults. They would only have to make that decision if I declared that they were the target. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, he, he's fine no matter what. So, Field will attempt on Hancock. Here is the assault attempt, and it comes off. We will see if we can shake Robert awake and call for a grand assault. So, one, two, or three, and it does not come off. He's, he's deep a slumber. Uh, not feeling well. So, we're going to go in just with what we got, which is, um, alright, so let's see what we got here. We got a plus one for assault. We got plus one for tactical. We've got plus three for final flank. And then the numbers start coming down. We've got a minus one for four pieces of artillery to your three net. So that's a minus one in rolling. And then uh, you've got 15 and I've got five. So that is one to three. So it's a minus two for ratio. I needed that ratio roll. I needed that help. So I see five up and three down for a plus two. Two, four, five. Yep, finals of plus two. Okay. So here is the attack on Hancock, plus two. It's a five. And that's a and plus three. Plus three. So plus three on ten. So one DR for me. And it's an FA for me. Now, it's a little R. He's going to lose a manpower. I feel like I zoom in. I zoomed out here so I can see the whole board. I have big F, so I will lose two fatigues from field. Okay, so now he is going to retreat. He's not on route one, priority two. Priority three is not into hex more distant. It's into an enemy, but not an enemy occupied hex. It would so seem on four. this one will be your no manpower loss, and both of these would be manpower losses. Yep. So if I go one to here, I have the same options. Basically, I have to continue. If I go to 4630, I'll lose a manpower. 4730, I do not. And I only have to go two, so I will stop there. I will stay where I am there. Yeah, you know what? I, w I will take the hex. Next initiative. It's mine again. Okay. I'm going to activate Mahone with AP Hill. Here's his movement of plus two. It's five. So he'll go one, two. God, I hate these roads. Three, four, five to there. Initiative, mine again. All right, uh, I'm gonna have Barton march. Here's his movement plus one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, he's got an extended march. He's okay. Go one and two. Initiative, mine. Gordon, he'll also march. Movement three. Extended march. It's okay. One, two. We'll stop there. Uh, initiative. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is I don't have an exact plan of what I want to do, Roger. It's so piecemeal. It's like, ah. All right. Okay. Let's move Mahone again. Here's movement. Plus two. There we go. There's extended march. He's okay. So he's gonna go. Okay, so he's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, and eight to there. Initiative, yours. Okay. Warren will activate Griffin and Cutler. Here's their movement. Seven. They'll transfer to Griffin. Just completely changed what I was going to do. One, two, six, seven to there. Color will go one to there. Initiative. Yours. Well, I guess I better take advantage of that. Keith will go to two. Here's his movement plus one. There we go. Uh, so seven. He will go there. What would the fifth New York like to do? And he has four remaining. He'll stand. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use four remaining for an attack on Hancock. <laughs> so we got a plus one prepared. I've got a full flank, but one, two, three are going to come off, so it's just down to a plus one. Uh, and I've got artillery covered and tactical covered and manpower. I'm a seven, you're a nine, so it's a minus one for that. So, so I just see a plus one attack. Uh, let me look at that flank again. Sure. Let's see. So, yep, I agree. So that's a final of a plus one. Plus one, okay. Here's the plus one attack. At oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. I cannot win for losing, man. <laughs> that was surprising. <sighs> yeah. Oh, plus one. I don't know why I'm just... I have the... Best laid plans. All right, plus one on okay. seven. So I give you back one. Oh, is that a... Yeah, I'm a seven. Oh, it is, yeah. Man. I think we need, like, a mulligan shit or something, just to... <laughs> wow. Okay. So Hancock makes a brave stand, and I lose a manpower and shut down Keith. One, two, three, and loses a manpower. Fantastic. All right. Initiative. It's yours. So we'll take Griffin to T2. It's Warren. Here's his movement. Ah. Okay. He's just going to do a min move to there. Initiative. Yours. Okay. Well, Kershaw has done what he needed to do, I guess. <laughs> There's not going to pay that price again. So Kershaw goes to one. Here's his movement. It's six. So he'll go one, two, into restricted. Three, now you're free to go, three. right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, we'll stop there. I'll put up a next. I'll put up a. I'll put up a flanks refused. Okay. Initiative. Yours. Activate Lockwood. This is movement. Six. One, two, three, four, five. Initiative, yours. AP Hill, activate Mahone to three. Here's movement, six. Here's extended march plus one. He's okay. He'll go one, two, three, and four to Knowles turn out. Initiative, yours. Right, we'll activate Neil and Russell their movement. Six. Just go one to there. One, two, three to there. Initiative yours. Okay. You will activate early in Rhodes. Rhodes will need an extend march. Here's their movement plus two. Four. Stay with where he is. He's going to go. It's roads. One, two, three, four.
four to there. And roads extend. He loses a manpower. Oops. And go one, two, three, and four to there. Initiative. Mine again. Yule's going to activate all three early Rhodes and Gordon. Here's movement plus two. Okay. So I got three total. He's going to transfer to early. Rhodes will extend March plus one. He's fine. He'll go one. Two to there. Gordon's extend march. He's okay. He'll go one, two, three. And these guys don't need one, so they'll just go one, two, and three. Initiative. Yours. Right, we'll activate Russell, Neil, and Ricketts. Russell and Neil will need extend marches. Where's their movement? Seven. Okay. Um, I can do a cav retreat there. So yeah, so I'll, I'll be moving Neil first. Okay. Um, so. But the right will stay with Neil also. Sure. Rosser will flip. Go to fatigue level one. Loses entrenchments, and he is a minus two to this roll. So it's a, just one, which is no loss to you. You can go one, two, three, four, and five to there. Go seven hexes. Here's Neil's extended march. He's okay. So go one, right stays with him. Two, three, four to there. Russell's extend march. It's a five plus a one. So he's a six on an eleven. Is one manpower loss. It's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to there. Ricketts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to St. Margaret's Church. Initiative, mine. Well, I could try to move Crawford to 4528. Hope I get the next initiative and I'd have a plus four flank. But I don't think I'm going to get the next initiative. So I'm going to take right to fatigue, kneel to fatigue three, and attempt an assault on Wilcox. Here's the attempt. Comes off. So I have a type of a plus one. Tactical is even. It's three artillery pieces to four on rolling terrain, which I'm pretty sure that's a straight up minus one. Yeah, it is. Artillery is a minus yep. one. I think we're looking at a plus, so plus I, two. Plus two final is what I see. So maybe not the best time to make an attack. But I should, if I can get a retreat, we'll see. Plus two, it's an eight. The dice have been exceptionally kind to you, sir. Well, Best I can hope for is a six as well. Hey, it's you plus got two. It. So that's helpful on manpower losses, I guess. So you had 12. I'm 12. So I'm a 1DA. 1DA. And I'm a 10. So it's an offset, which sucks because it's 1DR. All right. Well, you get the better of that. Increase the manpower. What happened? Lose manpower. Okay. One, two, three. Dang. I was kind of hoping that would go a little better. It's only a retreat, too. Yeah. So, go one to there. That's obvious. And two to there. And I guess we'll keep it there. Jesus. And you did lose a manpower. I did. On that? Yep. So you're up to seven now. I am. 
Seventy. Okay. Twenty-one to six. So you're at fifteen. So you're three points shy of what you need. Would you like the hex? That's a good question. Yeah, I'll take the hex. Oh, initiative. It's yours. Now, <laughs> this is where we get the Morgan Freeman voice. I'd like to tell you. <laughs> Patrick had a fighting chance and he was going to lash out and get something back but I have a feeling that I'm dead I just don't know it yet and I do know it but we're going to we're going to see how uh, the rest of this goes here cuz you've got a really good thing building here and you've cut me off now more or less and these guys are just limping south of the river so I mean it's it's all coming up Roger <laughs> Uh, but here we go. Let's do the, uh, let's see, what do I need to do at the moment? What can I do over here? Well, I can't do Wilcox. Um, I can try to score some cheap points there on the 5th New York, but we're going to hold off on that for the moment. Um, I just do not like all of these units up here limping. So we're going to activate Barton to 3. Here's a movement plus two or plus one. He's just I'm just not getting anything going today. So extended march. He's okay. One, two, three to there. Oh, man, that's just terrible. Alright, uh, initiative mine. I'll have Yule activate Rhodes, Gordon, and Early. Um Here's movement plus two, seven. We have terrible extended marches coming. Uh, he will stay with early. Extended march for Gordon, plus three. He is a nine on four. Uh, let's see how bad that is. Nine on four. Oh, just a, I think it's just a one, I think. Uh, manpower, yeah, just one. Okay. So he loses a manpower. And he can go... Seven total. He would go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, we have roads. We'll go next. Extended march. They're actually okay. We will go. One, two, three, four to there. And Yule and Early. Extend March regular. They're okay. One, two, three, four, five, six to there. Initiative. Yours. Right, we'll activate Ricketts to fatigue two. Just movement. Go all one hex. Right, we'll transfer two Ricketts. He's just going to go one two to there. That one tactical rating is just. Yes, the Ricketts gambit. We've, <laughs> we've both exploited it. <laughs> it's just awful. Unless I'm keeping Tyler out of the action as well because of the same stupid thing. Uh, initiative. Yours. We've set up the welcome wagon there for Tyler at St. Margaret's Church. Come on <laughs> out for some pineapple upside down cake. It's lovely. Um, okay. Yeah, let's get Hampton out of harm's way. He will march. Uh, Hampton and Rosser. Uh, movement plus two. That's eight. No extended march necessary, so they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chief and the Duke boys across the county line. Here's the next initiative. It's yours. Okay. I'll take Barlow to T1. This is movement. It's three. I'll go one. Two to their initiative. Mine. Pick Wilcox to fatigue one. 
There's this movement. One. There's the ninth core I love. Just go one to there. Initiative. Yours. Okay. Let's have Wilcox go to four. My Wilcox. It's the Battle of the Wilcoxes. Here's the movement plus one. It's four. What would the fifth New York like to do? Oh, actually, uh, here's my extended march plus three. Uh, so we are going to lose a manpower. What would the fifth New York like to do? Uh, they'll cav retreat. Retreat roll. Come on, one girl. Oh, oh I hit my hand. I hit my hand. I was so excited. Ow! Ow. I've been thinking about moving him for a long time, and I just. It, it finally faster. comes up, Patrick! Hooray! Alright. There we go. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> I just was bringing my hand up, and I knocked it. Alright. Um, so, <laughs> it, yes, it's a great campaign's injury. He'll be on injured reserve for two weeks. Alright. Uh, let's see. Wilcox then can move with abandon. So he has five, six movement. So he's gonna go. You guys are five, so one, two, three, four, and five to there. Initiative. It's yours. Side so activate Potter Crittenden. And let's watch me Wilcox. Yeah, we'll let Wilcox recover. Here's their movement. Not Wilcox, just those two. Ah! Good golly, Miss Molly. Burnside will stay with Potter. He'll go one, two to there. Or one, two to there. Initiative, yours. We'll activate the 1st, 11th, Virginia. Here's their movement. Boo! Come out of their entrenchments. Just cross the river. Initiative. Mine. I'll have Pickett march. Come out of his entrenchments. Here's a movement. Plus one. Five. I'll go one, two to there. Initiative. Uh, Picket will entrench to fatigue level two. Initiative. Yours. Take Barlow to fatigue two. This movement. Two. He'll just do a min move to there. Initiative. Mine again. We'll take Tyler to fatigue one. This is movement four. Go one, two, three, four to there. Initiative. Mine again. Now I get a string of initiatives. Bernie to fatigue one. Four. One, two, three, four to there. Initiative. Mine again. Take Bernie to take two. It's just movement. Five. Extend march. He's okay. One, two, three, four, five to there. Initiative. Yours. W.H. Lee march. Uh, Shambliss to one. Here's movement. It's a ten. Eleven. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to there. Initiative. Mine again. Have the first Virginia dig in. Uh, initiative. 
Mine again. Hmm. I hate to do it, but I gotta. Uh, I'll activate Barton to fatigue level four. Here's his movement. Plus one. It's five. Here's extended march plus three. He's going to lose a manpower. And he'll go one, two, three, four. Beside the creek. Creek's good. Creek's safe. Initiative. Mine. I'll have Yule activate early. Here's his movement. Plus two. Eight. Wow. Here's extended march plus one. Flips. And he's got eight. He'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I'm just picturing the Reverend from Blazing Saddles. Well, Rhodes, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. All right, greater good and all that. All right, initiative. Mind. Anderson is going to activate Kershaw to two. Here's There's Kershaw he's down here. Yeah. Here's movement plus two, six. They will, they will both transfer to Kershaw. We will get rid of our flanks refused. And just. One, two, three, four, five to there. Initiative. Yours. Right, we'll activate Russell and Ricketts. Double both need extend marches. Just their movement roll. Four. Uh... Wright's going to stay with Ricketts, but Russell's going to move first. Here's his extend roll. I believe that's a plus two for him. He is okay. So he's going to be okay. So he's going to move one, two, three to there. He has one movement point remaining, so he's going to put up a flanks refused. Here's Ricketts' extend march. He is not okay. He is going to flip. He's going to go one, two to there. He's going to stop. Uh, initiative? Yours. I'd like to say there's something I could do, but we'll give it one shot. All right, Chambliss will go to two. Here's his movement, plus two. It's nine. Here's extended march. He's okay. So he'll go one, two, three, four, and nine to there. Initiative mine. Uh, I gotta pass. Okay. Uh, I'll take Bernie to take three. Here's his movement. It's a two. Here's his extend march. Five plus two, so that's going to be a seven on a 13. Might be two manpower losses. It is. So what would uh, Shambliss like to do? I have two movement points. You're seven to one, so that's a plus six. Sixteen percent or plus six. That's, uh, that's Hobson's choice, really. All right, we'll uh, we'll flip. He did what he could do, I guess, um, which is try to minimize this. I'm gonna flip. We will get a uh, fatigue. 
right, so it's a minus two to this roll, and it's two, so you lose one. And we go one, two, three, four, and five and six. So you have one movement point. You'll just go to there. Initiative. Yours. I just gotta let you do what you're gonna do, so I'll pass. Okay. Take Tyler to T2. Watch this movement. It's two. You need to get a little more than that. Initiative. Mine again. Pursuing pass. Yeah. Take Tyler to T3. I'll need an extended march. Come on, get a six. It's a five. Extend march. He's okay. Five was good enough. He'll go one to there. He'll make a prepared attack on roads. So type is a plus one. Tactical is going to be a minus two. It's 15 to two. So that's so plus six, six yeah. ratio. Uh -huh. Final flank, uh, all six hexes covered, so none come off. So that's going to be a flank, it's going to be a plus four. Creek's going to be a minus one. And I believe you will get a roll for artillery. No, oh, hey, all right, it's looking up. Here we go, on even, artillery is used. It is used. Okay, so I've got, I see 11 up and four down. Four down, yep, plus seven. One, one more calculate. Uh, plus seven final. Whoa, another six hundred. I, I believe you've rolled three sixes on a, on combats today. Uh, I have, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I wasn't expecting that one. I was expecting a one. With... I was hoping for a one, but let, <laughs> yeah. let's see if we still get that one. Uh, okay. So 13 to three, it's plus 10. That is uh, three DR, two DR. Yeah. That wipes them out. Okay. DR. So. Uh, that's going to put you over the top, so we're going to delete roads, give you three more manpower losses, that takes me to an even 10, so that is 30 points in that, minus your 4 for 8 points, so it's at 22, what would Tyler like to do? He'll stay put. Okay. okay, so right now I've got four Union manpower losses and ten Confederate, is that right? That is correct. So it is 22 net points for you. Plus the three for Rhodes not making it back. Correct. So do we need to play a turn four? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, realistically, do do I, I mean, is there anything I can do other than not hemorrhage more points? I, I don't think so. I mean, I guess for me now the question is, do I push, I mean, I've got two fairly fresh divisions. Is do I push south to take Ashland, Wickham, and Hanover, or do I turn west and try to trap Heath Field and at least Heath and Field and Wilcox? I don't see any road to victory for the Confederates here. It's just, uh, you know, for our friends online, Holger, uh, it is <laughs> is how decisive do we want to make this the Union? Right now, it's it's getting you know pretty close up there. I I I got the decisive victory on mine. So spoilers. Um, I would be willing to say that this is going to easily be another Union decisive because, yeah, you've got the 5th Corps that could just race down and do whatever they want to do in the rear area and then potentially using the 6th Corps or whatever to... My, my plan, such as it is, for the beginning of Turn 4 was to, of course, keep Wilcox in range of AP Hill, bring him up here so that I could extricate these two with one movement. I was trying to keep this avenue open just so we have yeah. I have a pathway down south of the of the North Anna River. Uh but that noose just started tightening, man. You did a great job just piecing all of it together. Even when you didn't have all of the initiatives, you knew that I was going to run out of initiatives eventually because my yeah. I was expending my currency trying to make something out of nothing. And unfortunately this time to quote Paul Newman, nothing was not a cool hand. 
<laughs> I just ran out of gas, yeah, that, you know. That that's what makes it hard, I think, when the union has this many big units the Confederate and the Confederate player has so much that they have to try to do, really, that they can't afford to pass, because if they pass they get stuck north of the river. You've got to keep moving. Yeah. But if you keep moving, you even if you with the initiative, you surrender the initiative back. Because you, like you hear, you you just didn't have. There's nothing you could do. All your guys were exhausted, and if you moved them up north, then it was worse. So this hurt. Both of these hurt badly in yes. the fact that it's like, okay, well, the first one failed. Well, the second one should should have a better chance of not failing, yeah. and they both failed. So, I that was the point there when I was like, okay, now now it's just Roger's game. And remember that little black cloud I talked about at the beginning? Well, that turned into a rainstorm, and it, and it started raining, and I went, okay, I'm just delaying the inevitable here, but I do want to see what I could do. I thought there was a, a moment there, but once you got the rambling wreck up here, once you got the, the six core moving down here, starting to threaten, I was like, okay, and then you also had the possibility with all of my shattered units here at the rally point, you could threaten them with the ninth core, or as you did, you uh, you brought. I love that it came down to you like ah Tyler in that one tactical. Who won the game for you, <laughs> Tyler? Freaking Tyler. Well, I had to keep him more across the creek. Want to get anywhere close to you. It's the human um, wave, man. Across the creek and surrounding it. It's just uh, wow. That was that was a really good job. This one is a very and now having two plays, I've played at both sides, we can we can pivot into our scenario discussion of this. You said it last time, and I think it was just because the shock of, you know, that massive attack at, at Ashland to finish it out, and I shattered that unit and destroyed Pickett, and, and then you've done the same here. There's a very nuanced puzzle for this, for the Confederate player. And you and I have tried both things. You have tried the massive exodus south of the North yes. Anna. Build your defensive bulwarks. Let me come to you. Usually that's my gut, too, is if you get the movement, get down there and set it up and just let them fall apart as they march because that's what they're, they're going to start melting away because of their haste to get down there. That's one possibility for the Confederates. The other possibility is as I did here, I'm like, let's let's flip the script a little bit. Let's make a stand here and then slowly deprive the crossings over the Mattapony so you don't get any open field marching, which I think is what Lee was ultimately trying to do historically, is just constantly face that flank to them and prevent them you know, from turning that flank and getting around through the natural avenues. And I tried that, and initially that day one, very successful. And then, yes. and then, and then, <laughs> you got over Hawes Bridge, and you punched Ewell in the face. And that was like, oh, man, it's all coming apart now. And it just started, I started getting poor movements, and and you started getting your foothold in. And I think that was a great adjustment. You said, okay. You, you're preventing me from going down there, I'll come at you. And I think that's the Union's advantage here with the manpower, even though they've got the crappy little divisions. You've got the logistics that you, once you get that initiative, you can build the surrounds and you can threaten on multiple faces and, and make it very untenable for the Confederates. And that's exactly what you did here. And kudos on that. Well, as you pointed out, the, the, the pivot of the whole was the battles down here where you didn't get significant losses on Gibbon. And I realized that I probably should have, well, actually I didn't have a bunch of a chance. <laughs> I don't know if I ever had initiative an opportunity to actually just move him to here and get him out of there. And I was, and then, you know, I was trying initially was I was trying to sneak him past and then have him do some head south and make him that problem. But, I, I was lucky there that your two attacks did not, especially that second attack would have been, I would have had some serious... That one, yeah, well, see, and they were two different attacks. The first one, I had the full flank, uh, mm -hmm. and, except for the, the first New York, and that, by all rights, should have at least yeah. gotten something, and I got no return on my investment on that one. And then the second one, I was doing it because I was intentionally trying to in incur your retreat losses and that one failed and for two different reasons and that that was hurtful that i took that very personally roger <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> well, I roll, and, and you, how many? How often are, 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 is someone going to roll? How many sixes did I have on attack? You had three, three, three attack. Roll, you had three combat rolls, and all threes were sixes. Three combat rolls, yeah. yeah. And all threes were yeah. sixes. One was the defense, and yeah, yeah. 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 That that obviously, uh, I think for the Confederate player, the Union player cannot roll sixes. <laughs> that's a that's a sound strategy, Roger. I uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I will agree Somehow with that. You gotta keep that from happening because. Uh, yeah, I think the margin for error here on the Confederate player is really slim, and the Union player has, they can make some mistakes, and I think I did make several, and I was able to to survive, because, like, I think I had the opportunity, instead of pushing, I could have pushed Ninth Corps at, you had a couple weak units, and I pushed Ninth Corps south, and I could have swung them over and maybe dealt them a blow, but it worked out. I'd be interested to hear what the, uh, if, if the designers are watching to put a suggestion, how does the Confederate player win this scenario? <laughs> well, in, I'm not seeing it. In, con- <laughs> in contrast or in conjunction with, I guess, the decisions that were made in the significant changes from the first edition, are we finding oh, that yeah. that makes it a little more difficult for the Confederate player? Was it, was it super easy for the Union and now it's less easy? Or it, was it super easy for the Confederates to win and now it's more balanced and it just requires, we said it already, a very thin margin of error. So as a, you need a very skilled Confederate player to A1, not make foolish mistakes, B2, have a sound extrication strategy and you need a little bit of luck so all three of those things are the balancing factor that have to go just so because if if you at if you let the union get any wiggle room on that they have the advantage in the manpower they have the advantage in the multiplicity of the divisions you know they have more moving parts right so it's not only the manpower which is just the, like tyler's a 15 right but truly, in setting up ratio attacks, they have that advantage, potentially. If you put Grant in the right spot, as you did on the second, first or second day, where you just brought oh, in this human yes, wave yeah. on, on Yule, well, that's going to help. So you've got ratio possibilities there, and you've just got the overall possibility of setting up good flanks if you can manage to, to trap them in the open. Uh, all of those things are, are checks against the Confederate player. In addition, you've got this whole mindset, like you kept pointing out to me, like, you got to get south of the Yana. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I am aware. I was just making sure. I didn't I didn't want something to go, oh, crap, I forgot all about that. That's the problem. That's, like, oh, it's wow, just that's... back there. It's just constantly like, because if you don't make that conscious choice right from the beginning to go down there and just have everyone ready, which was the your strategy, then it's just at what point do you seed the opportunity to slow them down and you just make a break for it and and well, and and how difficult it is it to prevent yourself from getting the union in between you and the north anna which you were trying to do i think this was probably my my luckiest little tidbit here was blocking this river, railroad bridge here and forcing you at that point to say all right i'll take the fifth core and then what did you do you rolled a six and you, yeah, you got around yeah. them which wasn't my original idea was to was to just keep pressure on Kershaw. It wasn't actually to to try to take advantage when you had to move him out. Uh, was, but then I got the six and it completely changed what I was going to do. I was going to do kind of put some of the fifth to here, put some of the fifth, put some of the, I'm moving my mouse, put some of the fifth core here and some of the fifth core here. But then I rolled the six and it was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll swing around and, and take Grant with him and, and maybe get a flank on him, like you tried, like you got a flank on Hancock. You know, you mentioned the previous, it's it's significantly changed. They increased the victory points for the Union a lot. And they also lowered the scoring. So like Hanover Junction was a 12, now it's a 24. And to win, you had to get to 25 points. And it was only a three-day scenario instead of four. So they, they clearly re, rebalanced this a lot. I can't wait to see um, the when this is used for a tournament, and I'm sure it will be in our next online Great Campaigns tournament. I, at one point, they will have this as one of the scenarios. I guarantee it. This one, Sheridan Ride South, and I am anticipating the final data on this. I want to see the outcomes uh, from from oh. playtesting with very skilled players, and obviously, you know, a controlled environment to the random 
you know, 12 people that will be playing this scenario, 12 to 20 people in tournament environment, I want to see the final results of that and see is are we going to determine that there is a skew now? I'm not saying there is. I'm just saying that it is a very challenging scenario for the Confederate player. And and how are those changes going to offset the realities of play? Are we going to see a skew, you know, showing up in the data? I mean, it's fun. I mean, I, it you know, I, I've gotten into these more of these games where winning is difficult. It make that doesn't make it less fun for me. Uh, getting beaten decisively <laughs> <laughs> no and what you know there was a moment in this when uh when i was sitting there like okay so these have failed now what do i do what do, and what hurt me the most was i had plans and schemes for mahone to come down here and help uh and ap hill's like you know what <laughs> i just got to get him south of the river so i put him down there to make sure you didn't get a cheap set of nine points yeah. for Noel's turnout against burnside because that would have hurt i was like really burnside just walks into an old turnout and lights a cigar <laughs> yeah well, that was that was what i was looking to see is okay how are you going to protect these because i was definitely looking at making a run but i wanted to wait i wanted you to commit and then you commit it's like okay well i can't do that let's do something else that's what makes this tricky is that that and in the previous version it was only a plus one point for the union for infantry divisions instead of plus three and that's a huge plus two points doesn't sound like a lot but that really could change your your mindset they'll give up some points to to keep the union player away from a nine point location no this was fantastic i loved both plays of these for different reasons uh you know, I I got we're we're even now one and one, but unfortunately the union has taken both games, so we need to determine what the nature of that is. I I want to see some quantitative data uh, about this. I want to yeah. see a hundred plays of this and just kind of look at at the review. I want to review the data of that just to kind of see. But I know for a fact that when they were redesigning this, I know Chris especially is he's a data guy, so I want to know what their notes and their feedback were that, mm. that led to these decisions and changes to go from three days to four days, some of the victory point changes. And is it just more to incentivize that so that you avoid combat or what? Uh, I imagine this old to strike them a blow in the previous was probably hard to win as the union player with only three days and with a higher victory point margin, you have to get to 25 and lower victory points. In terms of location. So the question then remains, did they overcorrect, or is it is it going to just even yeah. out over hundreds of plays? Probably even. So. Yeah. I'm sure good players would be like, no, you're missing right. the best strategy. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I, and and I want to hear your folks' <laughs> comments down there. That's that's what that comment section for. And, you know, feel free. They, what do you think of these opening attacks, seizing the initiative right there and uh, and trying to, to knock out Hancock in that first day? I Did I over-pursue? Did I over-commit to that? Should I just... I, you will not bruise my feelings. So feel free to discuss. Would you have done it differently? And what... Because I think some of these are great. They could be... You know, Alberto sometimes puts these little uh, snippets on... Uh, on social media and says, all right, here's the setup. What would you do, Carl Malden? What would you do? <laughs> Indeed. But we will leave it here then, and we're going to move on to our very next scenario. Uh, scenario 7, which is called Bethesda Church. And we're going to see that next week. And we'll swap sides again, so Roger will be taking the Confederates for that first game. And uh, we really appreciate everybody watching. I hope you are as excited as we are again for the physical copies here shipping soon. So please take a moment. Uh, I'm showing you to click that like and subscribe button as we ask you each and every week. I'm still shooting for like 100 views and 100 likes on any one of my videos. I will celebrate greatly when that happens. Uh, but you guys have been tuning in more and more. I've, I'm seeing the numbers tick up uh, over and over each week. So that is fantastic. Thank you so much for supporting the channel in whatever way you engage with us. And I'm also showing you that we got a, we got another couple new supporters in the last couple weeks. So thank you very much. Your names are up there now. We really appreciate the financial support. Although you're not obligated, we really appreciate the tips. And Roger. Ooh, my knuckle's not going to heal. <laughs> but, but it was worth it. <laughs> uh, how'd you injure your knuckle? Cavalry retreat. <laughs> Well, you have a great week, sir, and I'll talk to you next time. Okay, bye-bye.